P -p Paula, where are you? It's time for a yummy piece of pie! <laughs> I see he finally figured out that she's missing. It's about time. He was the last person in town to realize that his daughter's been kidnapped. Goodness gracious, he was out of touch. Hello, this is Escargo Express. Your delivery charge is $18. Can you cover the bill? Yes, I can. Uh, what do you want me to take? I can take up to three things. Aren't you just a tryhard? Well, that's funny, because I only want you to take one thing. You can have this broken machine. Uh, that's it, actually. Yes, that's the only thing, because I said it, it was the only thing. Have a nice day, and get out of my face. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Earthbound. Last time, we showed off our wonderful people skills as we got to talk to a lot of the members of Tucson, uh, gaining some powerful allies in the process, and powerful items. We have the Pencil Eraser, which will allow us to get past the giant iron pencil statue in Peaceful Rest Valley to hopefully rescue Paula before she's turned into a human sacrifice. This time, we're going to use the broken the uh, pencil eraser to get past the giant iron pencil statue to hopefully make sure that Paula doesn't become a human sacrifice. But before I do that, we need to prepare. And before we prepare, I need to talk about the two psychic moves I've learned of the past two episodes and failed to touch upon. First is Shield Alpha. It's a shield that will it will shield one person uh, and reduce all physical damage they take by 50%. Using a different shield will cancel these effects. This only makes sense because if you shielded someone with a psychic shield and a physical shield, they'd be pretty much invincible. So it only makes sense that you can use powerful shields, but you can only shield against one. You can only block against one type of attack. Uh, next is uh, PSI Paralysis Alpha. For the PP cost of 8, it will force one enemy into a numbed or paralyzed condition. This will prevent them from using bash attacks, but they're free to use psychic moves, uh, any special abilities they have, and items. So you don't want to use it against, I don't know, a psychic person, I guess. And you should probably only use it against, like, I don't know, <laughs> bosses? It makes sense? Yeah, bosses. Now, on to the preparation part. I would like to go up here. Because this is our first time in the the Tucson department store. There's a food shop here, a food shop there, a food shop here and there everywhere. Um, but what I want is the toy store because toys are fun. There's the toy store. Let's talk to this woman who doesn't look like she should be running a toy store. Sell off one of my hamburgers. In fact, let me sell off another one. I don't really need hamburgers anymore. Yeah, let's sell off a couple. All of them, I mean. Now let's keep one just for emergencies. Uh, now I'd like to buy some teddy bears. A lot of teddy bears. Four teddy bears. Just keep doing up those teddy bears. No, just keep them coming. Keep them, keep them coming. I will pay $200 for teddy bears because I am desperate. One more teddy bear, please. Thank you. That's, that's it. I spent $700 on teddy bears. <laughs> I can go get a life now. Let's deposit the rest of our cash in here, and call it good. I uh, keep one dollar, why not? Now, this episode's late, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, I'm not sick, thank goodness. I've been sick in the past, and Let's Plays since delayed them by <laughs> about a month. So, it's not the situation here. Um, my recording setup, well, let's just say it's undergoing changes. I'm recording with an HD console for the first time, in the history of the channel. And while I'm not, you know, uploading in full HD, and this game isn't in HD, it still takes its toll on my laptop, which I still use to record. I don't use my super powerful computer. So it made some recordings lag, I lost some recordings, and it forced me to start reevaluating my situation and <laughs> start recording on my new computer! Well, dumb mushroom. <sighs> Didn't see, I wasn't paying attention, and now they're draining my teddy bear of all of his pee pee. That's a horrible thing. Don't beat up my teddy bear. Don't, don't beat up me either. Just go into the ground, fertilize it, and grow something constructive. And you can see, yeah, the ramble and evil mushroom tried to spread spores on me, but got the teddy bear instead. Okay, let's do this thing in. <sighs> Hopefully, I will pay attention this episode, because if I don't, that will lead to some very bad scenarios. 
Is there a but yes, there's a butterfly up here. Let's use life up. Yeah, and then get that butterfly. Thank you, butterfly. So yeah, back to what I was saying. Uh, I, I currently record off of my laptop, which is a very slow computer, uh, but it's something that I've had to do, because if I moved my entire recording setup in the place where I edit, it would suck up so much power that it just, my, the room couldn't handle it. Uh, but I'm, I'm trying to fix that situation by getting a smaller TV. And hopefully that, that will make it so recordings don't lag anymore, which is something I've dealt with for the entire history of the channel. Uh, for a year, I've dealt with recording lag, and it's always been something I didn't like and I've had to cope with, but now I guess I'm taking steps to fix it. Can you go away? I don't want to have to be dodging enemies this early. It's kind of... it's kind of ridiculous. Okay, hopefully this will fix things. Looks like it's fixed things. Okay, it fixed things. Good. Let's continue on. Now, Peaceful Rest Valley, despite having the word peaceful in it, is far from it. It, pe Many people believe that it was designed for having two party members with you, or having two party members total. And this makes sense. Let's go ahead and use this pencil racer. Because Everdread talks about how he wishes that he could be with us, but unfortunately he can't. And there's an un unused sprite uh, for Everdread, which shows him dead. Uh, so, a ghost. Um, this is kind of spoilers, but whenever you have a party member with you, and they die, or they fall unconscious, then they follow you around uh, as a ghost, and then you can uh, revive them at a hospital. And so Everdread has this sprite, but it's never used in the game. So it's thought that he's supposed to be a temporary party member, which makes sense, because since this area is so hard, it would make sense that you'd have someone with you to help handle it. So, yeah, that explains that. Pictures taken instantaneously. I'm a photographic genius if I do say so myself. Okay, get ready for an instant memory. Look at the camera. Ready? Say, Fuzzy Pickles! Wow, what a great photograph. It will always bring back the fondest of memories. Up here, you can see that there's a present. I will hopefully be grabbing that present this time, this episode, because I I, I need it. Oh, goodness. Uh, okay, there's our first example of one of the enemies of Peaceful Rust Valley. I believe, from past experience, this enemy seems scripted, because no amount of, of off-screen cycling that I do, it just won't despawn. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, it might get stuck. It might get stuck. No, no, no. Go to the left, go to the left, left, left. <sighs> Man. Okay, let's try again. I really don't want to fight this enemy. Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is. Okay, okay, okay. If I can, if I can get through here. He's trying to get me. He is, but he can't. Outrun him. Yes. Yeah. This shows you, tree. You don't know anything, tree. I got you. I've never gotten past him before. That's awesome. Okay, I I'm trying to avoid every enemy I can, but it's for those of you who want to see these enemies and all that they can do to my body, uh, you'll get your wish, because I probably will be fighting them. There's no way that I'll be able to avoid death for this long. I took that travel charm, but actually, I didn't want to. Eh, I didn't really want to, but I guess I'll, I guess I'll take it. Let's keep going south here, because there's another present, and... You know what? That's one thing. One of the things about this area is that it's full of butterflies. Uh, if you you can always keep yourself at full health with Life of Alpha, and never have to worry about your PP because butterflies are everywhere. So I'm going to drop this hamburger and pick up what this capsule, ha uh, this uh, present has, because it's a luck capsule that will permanently raise our luck by one. Really sweet. And if you remember. Luck is our hit ratio. Okay, I don't want to fight you. I'm a pacifist. There's a butterfly, which I don't need. I'm a pacifist. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I don't want to fight. I just want you to go away. I want to close my eyes and open them and this entire nightmare to be gone. And it worked. What do you know? I wonder who made the bridge impassable. 
Why would someone do this? Crud. Wait! Wait, you're the guy! <laughs> this is the guy that we met in Annette twice. The guy that was uh, always, you know, the police were blocking him. First time was right in the beginning of the game, first episode, uh, where the police blockade had him trapped right next to our house. And then another time was also with the police blockade, and he was stuck from getting to Tucson. And this is the same guy. Okay, it's not, it's, I don't have the authority to do this because the game's been out for longer than I've been alive, but I'm going to give this guy a name for the purposes of this Let's Play, in case he doesn't already have one. I'm going to name him, let's see, let's look at his face here. Um, I'm gonna name him Wally. That seems like a good name, Wally. And you guys know, I, <laughs> I'm still stuck on the old Chugga Conroy where he'd name everything. Oh, present. And I, I want to name something. Oh, croissant. <laughs> oh, everything. You know, I, I named a Pikmin sort of accidentally in in Pikmin. I named any Pikmin who drowns Ben, which I didn't realize at the time, but <laughs> Ben drowns is a thing. I mean, I know. Oh, bomb. Um, let's throw away the croissant. I don't want the croissant. I want the bomb. I, I knew about Ben Drowned at the time that I named that Pikmin, but I just didn't think about it. Like, it didn't register in my mind at all that Ben Drowned was a thing. And so I'm just like, hmm, let's name him Ben. And it it worked out, because Ben drowns. Oh! Okay, he's stuck. I think. He better be. Yeah, he's stuck. Okay, yeah. Playing tango with death. That's how I roll. It's also how I rock, because I rock and roll a lot. <laughs> have I gotten in a battle? I have not gotten in battle yet. That is awesome. I guess I should talk about the enemies, though. Uh, the the tree right there is a territorial oak. If you fight it, it isn't that hard. It will lower your offense and defense, and then use bash attacks, but it really doesn't do anything. Save that bird fly, actually. It doesn't do anything. Not at all. And you want to go. You want to take the left path up here. But when you kill it, it will burst into flames, and it deals 200 to 300 damage to you. Yeah, that would insta kill me. No matter how much I protect myself with uh, with teddy bears, that would kill me in one hit. So. If you see a territorial oak, what you want to do is save it for last. So you do, you want to fight it last if you're in battle. Uh, running away can work, uh, but doesn't work well. There's just kind of a low chance of running away from these enemies, it seems. And so what you want to do is save it for last, then kill it, and try to get through the text boxes as quickly as possible. If you do that, then you won't die. It will just stop the uh, the health meter at the point that it was when you exited the battle. So you can only take 10 damage from their insta-kill. Uh, let's see, what do I need to throw away? I'll throw away the travel charm, because that's that doesn't really do much. Yeah. Sorry, travel charm, but I like this item better. This is a hard hat. This is our new armor item, or our new headgear item. Go here, replace the Mr. Baseball cap with the hard hat. That will raise our defense by nine. Nine! That's pretty sweet. We should be able to survive much better now. Okay, there's a tree. I don't... Oh! <laughs> don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. Because I know that you knock me out like a light. I'm going the wrong way. Man, that makes me want to write a haiku about this area. Haiku, haikus are fun. I've written a lot of them lately, in fact. Okay, what's this way? In fact, wait, are we at the end? We totally are. We are at the end, folks. Uh, let's cycle you. I got through this much quicker than I... Th oh! I did look down. <laughs> I looked down as I was talking. I was looking at the recording to see if anything would go wrong, and I just didn't look where I was going, and it cost me. Well then, well, that's fine. But yeah, I've been writing a lot of haikus recently, and over the past, I don't know, eight months, I've written a lot of them. I don't know. I've had to do a couple for school, but then I just took it on my own. I took up the, the banner on my own. You're not doing any damage to me. That's awesome. They're fun. I mean, they take a long time to write. Maybe about, I don't know, two hours for uh, a fairly long haiku. 
but they're, they're really fun, especially if you try to challenge yourself with putting rhyming schemes in them, because you're already challenged with matching syllables, but now you have to... Oh, for a second I thought Ness died. You, you have to match up, you know, a rhyming, a rhyming pattern with the syllables, and then you have to have a theme to the whole thing. That's really fun. I will, um... Most of the haikus I've written are about uh, Pikmin, which is kind of strange, but I found that it works really well. Because Pikmin just has a, such good lore to it, like the backstory is incredible. Especially for a Nintendo game, where they don't seem to pride themselves on making story. I mean, look at, look at pretty much any Nintendo game, um, and you won't see a fantastic story. You'll see a game that has a story, but it's not a good story. Oop. I thought he was stuck on the tree. <sighs> Son of a gun. Okay. Let's try and run away. Because if I can run away, that'll be good. No, okay. Of course. Well, you guys are getting your fill of battle now, and you get to see the Territorial Oak in its glory. I'm glad that I'm doing this as soon as I got the hard hat, though. Okay. Let's kill the mobile sprouts first, because they... Yeah, you, you want to kill them first. If you save the... If you don't save the Territorial Oak for last then it will explode and you'll be forced to take the full brunt of its damage. Which is something you want to avoid, especially since it doesn't do that much. It, you're not being hurt that much by saving to the last. It's, it's way more of a blessing than a curse. Let's take out these mobile sprouts. They don't do anything, really. They drain PP and they'll, I believe they'll heal the, the territorial oak, but they don't do much. They just kind of sit there, spawn more enemies. Okay, now we can focus on the Territorial Oak. Just do a ton of damage to it. And maybe be done? Maybe? Okay, it will blow up soon. <laughs> I'm really wondering if it will blow- There it is! Burst into flames, 276 damage to the teddy bear. Which, I believe the teddy bears also have a scrolling HP meter, even if it's not shown. So, that damage didn't kill my teddy bear. But it was close! <sighs> okay. I'm sorry, I need to look where I'm going now. I, I'm tempted to cut these battles out, but it's fine. They're just mobile sprouts. I'll make sure to avoid the, uh, the territorial oak, though, because that's that's not fun. You never want to fight a territor territorial oak. They give experience, but they don't give enough experience for the risk that you're taking by fighting them. The good thing is, like, their weakness is mashing, is mashing L, you know. In fact, that's something that's really neat about the game, is that you, you can f play through the entirety of Earthbound with one hand. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. Like, I'm doing that right now, in this episode. I'm using my left hand for both L, which is pretty much an action button. I mean, you can press A and say, you know, talk to, or check, or you can just press L and it will do whatever action the thing you're facing needs. You know, I'm probably not going to get a better spawn than this. I'm going to fight him. Yeah, you can pretty much play with your left hand, and I like it, because it allows me to, I don't know, be comfortable? Um, I'm not trying to shake a controller, I'm just lounging and talking to you guys, which is nice. It allows me to think about what I'm talking about a little bit more. This area is brutal, though. I mean... Or you could argue that it's not that brutal, but I'm playing it extremely safe. How many times I have tried to cycle an enemy off screen to make it despawn? Ooh, that's good. To make it despawn? I, I'm playing it extremely safe. When I first played through this area in my first playthrough, it was... It wasn't that bad. I mean, I fought... Yeah, that's how you do it. I fought every enemy I came across, pretty much. Because I was sick of Tucson and I wanted some action. But, for the most part, it wasn't that hard because I got farmed up. I got to a point where I could handle any enemy this area could throw at me. And it was all good. You know, once again, not going to get a better spawn than that. Let's go ahead and attack him. The other UFO won't come to me because he's stuck. Let's just bash away. Now, I got an item there while I was talking. A couple of life noodles. That is a good item. It's one of the best I best consumables in the game, and I'll go into it in a second, as soon as he's destroyed. Now, one thing you can do, though, is use the invincibility granted from... 
Ness's level's now 16! Sorry for the cut there, but I felt like the battles were getting repetitive. Oh, baby! Offense went up by 6?! What?! <laughs> that is one of the biggest stat changes I've ever seen! I didn't even know it was possible! Defense went up by 2. Oh, baby! Speed went up by 3. IQ went up by 1. Oh, baby! Luck went up by 4. Maximum HP went up by 1. Maximum PP went up by 5. Oh, goodness! Wow! That took me back. Oh, that that stunned me. Okay, I need to actually... I need to heal up, because I'm, I'm low after that battle. Life up. And now, healing. Cure the cold that I got. <sighs> wow, that was good. What I was saying is that you can kind of use the invincibility um, granted by an end of a battle to start, I don't know, I could use an Assassin's Creed term, a, ch a chained execution. Um, what you can do is use the invincibility to run behind an enemy. So you run through them, not starting another battle because you're invincible, and attack them from behind, possibly insta-killing that enemy and then doing the same thing to an entire chain of enemies. It's pretty cool. I'm not going to say it's an advanced technique, because I don't really think that there are advanced techniques in this game. But it's neat, and it's something that I love doing. I'm actually showing this battle because I got a six... Uh, I got an increase of six offense, and I want to show that off. And I caught a cold at first. Let's attack. <sighs> These battles, of course, it comes out right at the end. I'm trying to just go down here, see what there is. Actually, no, there's nothing down there. That took way too long. I am frustrated. I tend to not use slang terms when I am frustrated. Yeah. Healing. Let's go through this cave since I'm done with this area. It, it was sort of an ex a pleasant experience for the entire thing. Oh, snakes. Do you think I'm a toddler? I don't do snakes. I... I killed them episodes ago. I am level, what, 16 now? Yeah, I'm level 16. I, you know what? Just to prove that I can. I faced you from in, from the front, somehow, and I still killed you. One experience, not even worth my time. <sighs> Cup of life noodles. Sorry. <laughs> that Those battles. And bomb. Okay, bomb first, I guess, since I got it first. Bomb. Help! Damages an enemy when used during battle. Because of the, its explosive power, it may affect others besides the target creature. Gone after one use. It's a single target uh, attack that does splash damage to surrounding enemies. Which is something that I need to go into, and that is uh, the planes matter. The planes that the enemies are on, whether they're in front or in back or side by side, actually make a difference. It's not just like a list of all the enemies you need to defeat in a battle. It it changes things. Certain attacks will attack all enemies in a line. Other attacks will uh, do splash damage. And it's important to recognize that because there's a lot of strategy in the battles, even if it doesn't seem like it. Now, cup of life noodles. Uh, let's try to use this without actually using it. Okay. Help. Revives a friend who is unconscious. In addition, it also works well on poison, nausea, colds, sunstroke, falling asleep, uncontrollable crying, and feeling strange. This is effective when you have paralysis or you have been diamondized. This item will cure every status ailment in the game, including death. Yeah, death is a status ailment. It's called unconsciousness. So you can see, once again, <laughs> Pokemon, this team also made Pokemon. Uh, so it cures every status ailment, so you want to have one of these into your inventory at all times since they can they can certainly save you. Okay, this is Happy Happy Village. We don't have too much more time in the episode, so I'm not going to do much here. Um, I just want to do, I guess, two things. First, I want to fight this, this Happy Happy Cultist, aka the KKK member, because in the Japanese version, uh, Mother 2, they did not have those little pom-poms on the ends of their hats, so they're they're pretty much just the KKK, dressed in bluish-purple. I guess that'd be indigo- Whoa! <laughs> okay. Sure, Ness. Uh, inter interrupt my speech. Ness likes to do that. He really does. Okay, let's talk to you. I'm not going to explore much. I just want to do two, like, literally two things. 
Excuse me, tourist. I'm collecting donations to help protect the world from contaminants. Donate whatever you can. Um... I mean, I don't want to feel like I'm donating to a cult. But... <laughs> I have a dollar. I'll donate a dollar. Your good deed will be rewarded. Here's a postcard. Oh, uh, you gave me something? Go and be happy. I don't want a po- What does this even do? Like, I've never gotten this item because I never donated to her. Not really horrible, but the scene on the front doesn't make you want to go there. <laughs> okay, that was worth a dollar. I want to read that again. Picture postcard. Not really horrible, but the scene on the front doesn't make you want to go there. That's priceless. I will sell that as <laughs> soonest opportunity, which is now. Like I said, we're going to be talking to these fools next episode, but for now I just want to go into the shop, because I feel like this episode should be ended off with a reward. Now, something I've learned recently, and I hope I'm not wrong, because I, I learned this and I want to think that I actually learned something, is that you don't need to call your dad to get money in the ATM. He just tells you how much he has deposited since your last call. So, if I go in here, I should have more money than I did when I left. Yeah, I do. Okay. I, th I think I do. I'm pretty sure I do. I think I have like $300 more, and I want to withdraw... I don't know, 500 of that? 500, that, that'll work. How many teddy bears do I have left? None. Okay. Uh... Yeah, okay, let's talk to these people. You! Hello there, how, how may I help you? I will buy stuff. I will get the Sandlot Bat, because Ness is having a seizure and really, really wants this thing. For $98, I think he deserves it. Sandlot Bat? Alright, uh, thank you. Are you going to equip it here? Yes, I am. And my offense went up by 7, which is an insane crease increase if you consider that level up that we got. And I'll sell the T-Ball Bat for $24. And now, is there anything else I can get? I'm really excited. Copper, Holmes... No? Okay. This Holmes, oh wait, yeah, Holmes hat, I thought it said bat, is a, obviously it's a head item, but our hard hat that we got in Peaceful Rest Valley is better. It is, so we don't need it. But I would like to get the fry pan, and then also the ribbon. Yes, I want to get this. These are equipable items, but not for Ness. So you, <laughs> I mean, I don't really need need to worry about spoiling Earthbound for you guys since this has been around for 20 years now, but uh, I'll try not to spoil it, okay. We need them for something. You guys can guess what that is. They, Ness cannot equip them, but they're equipables and we'll be needing them soon, so read between the lines and figure out what that means. Okay, I'm going to leave this area and call it here. Thank you so much for watching, and next time we'll be exploring Happy Happy Village. This is a pr this was a pretty good episode, considering that I have already recorded this before and lost the recording, but it was pretty good, especially that level up. That was so good. Six, what was it? Yeah, six increase of offense. Look at that. I have 47 offense, and this is episode six. I'm, I'm coming a long way. I'm really powerful now. So, hopefully I can find a place to sleep around here. Um, I'll do it in between episodes. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, next time in Earthbound, we'll explore Happy Happy Village. If you like this episode, then comment. If you didn't like this episode, comment and tell me how I can make the next episode so that you would like it. I release new episodes of Earthbound Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and I will see you next time for another Pal Plays Earthbound.